Thanks to AliExpress for letting me select this mini PC to review, which allows me to cover products I wouldn't get to normally. This one was requested in the comments a while back, so let's see how the Gen Machine Li6000 Pro holds up. It's a very interesting mini PC, as it has a pretty good CPU and feature set at a dirt cheap price. It even has a metal shell, which I wasn't expecting for the dollars, and makes it feel a bit more premium, although the bottom cover is plastic as expected. But more importantly, it features AMD's Ryzen 6800H, an impressive 8-core 16-thread CPU with Radeon 680M graphics when it released many moons ago. Still holds up well in today's market, providing good bang for buck. However, the craziest part is the price of the mini PC itself. Currently on sale to coincide with this video, the Gen Machine comes in at 285 US dollars for the 16GB RAM model with no OS or storage. But there's a 38 US dollar off coupon bringing the price down to just 247. Or you can get the 1TB model for around 299 US dollars after the coupon. I chose the 1TB model for this review. Oh, and the prices on AliExpress are before any import taxes that your country might have. So for Aussies, we'll see an extra 10% GST added at the checkout. Oh, and AliExpress wants me to mention their new cashback feature, sort of like a loyalty program. By joining my team, you can get 5 to 15% cashback on everything you buy, and of course, you can still use coupons to sweeten the deal. So, the price is amazing, but does it come with anything else? Why, yes it does. This Gen Machine Mini PC comes with a 19 volt 90 watt power supply, HDMI cable, and VESA mount, which matches most other brands in the accessory department. Most of the specs are not listed, but on the front of the Mini are two USB 3 ports and a power button. Gen Machine includes a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E for wireless and Bluetooth. The back has a 3.5mm audio jack, dual HDMI, Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, another dual USB 3, and USB 4, 40 gigabit. This one supports power and display with a USB-C monitor. Not bad at all for sub 300 US dollars. Let's take a quick look inside. This is another mini PC with glued on rubber feet hiding screws. The nightmare that never ends. Luckily, they're pretty easy to remove. After the four screws are out, lifting the plastic lid is also straightforward. Inside is a 2280 M.2 Gen 4 X4 NVMe slot, while the other one is a 2242 M.2 Gen 4 X4 NVMe. The reason the bare bones unit comes with RAM is that it's soldered LPDDR5 running at 6400 mega transfers, which is nice and fast, but you can't upgrade or replace it. Unfortunately, there's no cooling for the SSD. If you buy the pre-build, you get Windows 11 Pro. The malware and rootkit scan came up clear. Ubuntu works fine apart from wireless and Bluetooth. This MediaTek chip is unfortunately not supported. Now we move on to the benchmarks. Cinebench single core up first, and the Gen Machine is close enough to the other 6800H entry we have from the Geekom A6. But in multicore, it's not the same, with the A6 in front of the default performance profile even if we tweak the BIOS for the Gen Machine to allow it to draw more power. Geekbench single core is again behind the A6 by a small margin. And the A6 is once again faster in multi-core. The Gen Machine Mini falls further behind in the short H.264 CPU video encoding test, so it's no surprise that in the longer AV1 CPU video encoding test, the A6 is also clearly faster. Switching to an AI workload, and Geekbench AI puts the Gen Machine right near the bottom when it comes to quantized AI performance. It does better in single and half precision. The Mini performs very well in the Geekbench AI GPU test. It's above the middle of the chart for its dirt cheap price. Thanks to the faster LPDDR5 6400 memory, the Gen Machine has an easy win over the Geekom A6 in the graphics department gets an 8% boost in score in Firestrike, around 7% better in Time Spy, and 6% in Steel Nomad. So overall, around a 7% GPU uplift in the benchmarks with a faster memory. The Radeon 680M was an iGPU that really allowed you to play most AAA games at the time if you stuck to 1080p low settings. Now it's not holding up so well, but it's still good for esports,
and some AAA games can hit the 30fps mark without needing any upscaling. The Ryzen 6800H also makes for a nice emulation box. I always check to make sure the USB 4 port works fine, so I hooked up my eGPU, and yep, no problem running my dock with an RTX 4070 Super. The Linux kernel compile benchmark with the Pharonix test suite is the latest added to the mix for those interested in coding on their mini PC. Here's the second result as we start populating the chart with each review. Interestingly, it's not a whole lot faster than the 7545U, which has newer generation CPU cores. The Gen Machine is a decent performer with Adobe Photoshop, adding more juice to improve the score slightly. Adobe Premiere performance is good, and will handle 4K projects pretty well. I was unable to complete the benchmark with a power limit increase as the Mini would just crash and restart every time. So make sure to stick to out of the box settings for video editing. 3 Mark storage benchmark shows the included SSD to be a decent Gen 3 NVMe drive. And for the price, I wasn't expecting much more. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a working temperature sensor, but being enclosed as it is with little ventilation, it will run hot and could thermal throttle during longer sessions. Here's where the first corner was cut. Bluetooth range of 4.2 meters or almost 14 feet is below average, but not too bad. Unfortunately, wireless range isn't great, with connection issues while playing a game of Valorant at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. An idle power draw of 7 watts is really good, and same as the Geekom A6. The maximum power draw result is very interesting since there's little performance gain from increasing it, yet power draw really shoots up. It's clear cooling is not up to snuff for the high power limit, and most of the extra watts are lost to heat and thermal throttling. I recommend sticking to the default power limit. Corners had to be cut somewhere to keep the price down, and it usually comes down to cooling, as it does here. The Gen Machine's maximum CPU temperature peaked at 98C, even in its default mode and it hit 100C after the BIOS power tweak. It's also a noisy mini PC with high fan noise under load. In fact, it's the loudest one out of the box yet, which doesn't surprise me at all considering the price tag. One other thing to note, the fan also has this grinding like noise whenever it starts up from being turned off or while idle. The Gen Machine Li6000 Pro is one of the smallest mini PCs we've looked at, taking up less than a half liter of volume. Mashing the delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. Advanced has AC power loss options. If you go to AMD CBS, MBIO common options, GFX configuration lets you set the VRAM limit. While SMU common options allows you to mess with the power limit. Looks to be 35 watts at default. For testing, I put it at 54 watts or 54,000. Again, not recommended with little gain and much more power draw. All right, this was a very interesting mini PC to look at with higher end hardware going for the lowest price possible. It sure is an attractive price for a mini PC with an AMD Ryzen 6800H. Yet it still comes with a metal case and has a decent feature set. It's also the first 6000 series mini PC we've looked at with fast LPDDR5 6400 memory, which improves performance by high single digit percentages. However, that memory is not upgradable or replaceable. The mini runs hot under load and fan noise is high. The value proposition with this mini PC is interesting, but when it comes to cooling, it's a case of you get what you pay for. Those looking for the absolute best bang for buck from just looking at the specs and price, and I know you're out there, will find the Gen Machine Li6000 Pro to be a very compelling mini PC for its meager asking price. But it definitely has its drawbacks and does not match a pricier 6800H mini PC in the cooling and fan noise department. If you're interested, 
Find it in my AliExpress coupons linked in the video description. And if you'd like to see another AliExpress mini PC reviewed in the future, let me know in the comments and it might just happen. Alright, before you go, during the last AliExpress sale, I reviewed a NAS mini PC and you can find the review of it right here. Cheers!